Hello, my friends. Welcome to the House of Knowledge. My name is Katikaev Gusinjan Mejidovic. I'm very glad to welcome you on our webinar, including answers to the most common questions you sent to us. Uh, the topic of our webinar is inversion, singular and plural nouns, and quantifier. So, what is an inversion? Inversion can be defined as the reversal of the normal word order. To be particular, it is the place it's the placement of a subject after a verb. In other words, it's simply a verb subject switch. Inversion is done in the same style that qu questions in the English language are formulated, where the subject and verb are interchanged before the question mark is added when to use an inversion when a statement features an adverb phrase at the beginning commonly inversion is used when the underlying statement happens to begin with an adverb phrase for example on the dance floor were the two free-spirited girls we all knew judy and meg next when a statement begins with a negative adverb or is modified by it any sentence that begins with a negative adverb or happens to be modified <coughs> by it, uh, by it will have to be inverted to make literal sense. For example, never had she met someone so determined to win her over as the man she will agree to marry. No sooner had they fallen asleep than the alarm started ringing. When uh, if is replaced by were, had, and should, a sentence will be inverted with a conditional that omits the word if to instead uh, use had, were, and should. Example: Had she started writing much earlier, she'd be done by now. Should he propose, make sure he knows everyone was well aware of his plans. After the preposition, so is followed by an adjective and that. An inversion is also likely to be used when the preposition so is followed by an adjective and that. So, psyched up were the dances that judges knew from the word go that they were the school in Venus. In questions. Uh, needless to say, sentence in, uh, inversion is what distinguishes questions from mere statements. It can also be used in a statement to bring variety to your style of writing, but you have to be extra worried while at it to avoid sounding awkward or too formal. Types of inversion, there is basically two types of inversion, those are subject-verb inversion, subject-auxiliary inversion. What nouns are used just in singular and which can be used in singular and plural? So we are getting to the second topic of our lesson. Uh, nouns used only in the singular. Some nouns are used only in the singular, even though they end in S. These include the names of academic, academic subjects such as classics, economics, mathematics or math. We call it physics, the physical activities, gymnastics and aerobics, the diseases, measles and pumps, the word and the word news. Uh, examples, math was, was never my best subject at school. Aerobics is great fun, you should try it. A nouns used only in the plural. Some nouns have a plural form, they cannot be used with numbers they include the names of certain tools, instruments and articles of clothing which have two parts. Uh, as for tools and instruments, the words are binoculars, headphones, sunglasses, glasses, scissors, tweezers, and as for clothing, we can say jeans, pajamas, tights, knickers, shorts, trousers, pants. Uh, here some examples. I have got new sunglasses. Do you like them? He always wears shorts, even in the winter. Uh, a pair of. We can use a pair of to refer to one example of these nouns. I bought a new pair of binoculars last week. 
that old pair of trousers will be useful for doing jobs in the garden. We use pairs of to refer to more than one example of this type of noun. They are uh, advertising two pairs of glasses for the price of one. I bought three pairs of shorts for the summer. Uh, other nouns which are always plural in form belongings, outskirts, clothes, premises, buildings, savings, money, congratulations, earnings, stairs, goods, surroundings, likes, dislikes, thanks. Examples, please ensure that you take all your belongings with you as you leave the aircraft. They live, they live on uh, the outskirts of Frankfurt, almost in the countryside. My clothes are wet. I'll have to go upstairs and change. She spent all her savings on a trip to South America. Collective nouns, group words. Some nouns refer to groups of people, example audience, committee, government, team. These are sometimes called collective nouns. Some collective nouns can take a singular or plural verb depending on whether they are considered as a single unit or as a collection of individuals. Uh, the words audience, committee, company, crew, enemy, government, public, team, for example, Manchester United or any other team. Compare, uh, seen as a single unit and seen as individuals. The audience was larger than average and uh, the concert was a success. The audience were all cheering wildly. The government is hoping that online voting will attract more young people to vote. The government are all over, are all were nervous about the report which will be published tomorrow. Manchester United is the world's most famous football club. Manchester United are looking forward to meeting Valencia in the final next week. In general, a plural verb is more common with these nouns in informal situations. And uh, the last topic for today is quantifier. Uh, quantifier. What is it? Что же это такое? Quantifier или квантификатор – это слово, которое обычно стоит перед существительным и обозначает количество этого предмета. Например, little juice – немного сока. Большинство квантификаторов идут в паре с существительными, но иногда они употребляются самостоятельно, когда из контекста, из контекста понятно, к какому предмету или объекту они относятся. Вот, приведем пример. Do you want some coffee? Just a little. It's clear that I mean a little coffee. Хотите кофе? Да, немного. Понятно, что имеется в виду. Немного кофе, да? В английском языке есть квантификатор, который означает большое количество. A lot, much, many, маленькое количество. A little, a bit, a few. Uh, и неопределенное количество. Some, any. Более того, можно выделить квантификатор, обозначающий достаточное количество. Enough, plenty. Необходимо отметить, что некоторые квантификаторы имеют одно и то же значение. Их отличие состоит лишь в том, что они употребляются с разными существительными. Какие-то квантификаторы используются вместе с исчисляемыми существительными, какие-то с неисчисляемыми. Хочу напомнить, что исчисляемые существительные – это те, которые можно посчитать, неисчисляемые, которые посчитать нельзя. Они употребляются только в единственном числе. Например, some water, or some coffee, love, society и так далее. All of, uh, the exam of the examples of a quantifier – Uh, are very well described in the video lesson so you can watch it you c so you can uh, watch again the video lesson if there is something unclear for you not clear for you as many times as you need to remember all of them so this is all for today the webinar is over thank you goodbye